Okay everyone, welcome back to another episode of CPPforbeginners.com's continuing tutorial series on learning C++. I am Damien, and today we're going to be talking about bubble sort and linear search. You'll notice that I've only included IO stream, so this is going to be just building off of things that we've already talked about. Um, I've set an array uh, equal to a constant int, which is uh, equal to 9. I have a variable called temp, which I've initialized to 0, and I'm going to be outputting that array after I do something to it. Now, so far we've talked about how to access arrays in a variety of ways. We've done the same with vectors. We've, we've done quite a few things, really. So what we need to do in this case is we really need to sort of handle uh, how to sort of methodically go through an array and change data into better formats or better sorted than what we have right now. And the easiest way to sort things, well, in my opinion anyways, is known as a bubble sort. And it's far from the most uh, quick sort, it's far from, you know, the, the fastest way of doing things. I'll be the first to admit that. Um, also, there is a, uh, a way to sort just using a, a pre-made library. It's something like sort and then whatever it is you want to sort. Again, you can do that if you want, but I think that understanding the underlying mechanics of what that sort is doing is more important than having the ease of that sort. In case you're ever in a situation where you need something that's sorting maybe objects you've made that you know you don't exactly have a, a direct way of you know telling the compiler what you want you know with the sort function so that's kinda what I'm going to try to impart to you guys now first things first we're going to need a bool and I'm going to call it swapped and we're going to set it equal to true this is going to be sort of a not exactly a cop-out, but it's going to be a way for us to check and see if we've successfully uh, swapped anything this time through. And if once this returns false, we're going to be exiting our loop. So that's kind of important. So we're going to do while swapped. So now swapped is set equal to true. Um, so that means that this is going to execute until, you know, some time. Now, from here what we need to do is we need to start sort of figuring out what we're testing for. So first thing we need to do is set swapped equal to false. Because with a bubble sort we're actually going through the entire array every single time through this while loop and for each time we're going through it we're going to be doing something but we set this to false to make sure that if things are still being swapped around that means it's not done so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a for loop and we're going to say for int i equals zero i is less than size actually I'm going to start with one and we're going to do an i++, so it's just a simple loop like we've always done. And so what I'm going to now do here is I'm going to say if uh, an array of i is less than an array of i minus 1, then we're going to do three things. We're going to do uh, temp equals an array of i. So what we're doing is we're storing wh whatever the position of i is inside of temp. Then we're going to say an array of i equals an array of i minus 1. And then we're going to say an array of 
i minus 1 is equal to temp. And then we're just going to set, oops, and that was not a semicolon. And then we're just going to set swapped equal to true. So for every single time it carries through this loop, as long as one thing is being swapped in here, we're pretty much good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, we're going to give this a run. Um, I think I left something out here on purpose. So I just want to see how that prints. And of course it didn't work because I'm using the internal terminal. <sighs> how embarrassing. Sorry about that. I went and set it so it would now use the external terminal. And you'll notice that my data is now sorted by number. Um, this is because every single time it goes through this loop, it's checking to see in here uh, if the data needs to be swapped based on what's before it. And that's the reason why we used i is equal to 1, because the first time through the loop, we're going to have um, an array of i, which would be 0 if we started with 0, comparing to an array of negative 1, which would obviously be uh, an error of logic. Now there are a lot of different things you can do here. You can do uh, a test here, which is a really good idea, especially if you're going to be porting this to other operating systems and things of that nature, but we're going to talk about that more uh, next video because I will run out of time before that happens. So what I'm going to cover here, just check the time again, okay, yeah, about six minutes. So what I'm going to do here is talk quickly about a linear search, and I want to kind of teach you guys the logic of that. With a linear search, we're going to need three things. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to add a lot of comments to this so you guys can sort of better understand it, because that was very quick. Um, uh, bubble sorts are a little complicated when you're first looking at them. I swear I'll comment the bejesus out of that. So with a linear search we need two things. We need a for loop and a key term. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to set an int and we're going to call it key and we're going to set it equal to 70. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to simply create a for loop and we're going to say int i equals 0, i is less than size, i plus plus. And now inside of this what we're going to want to do is set up a simple if statement. And we're going to say if an array of i is equal to key, all we're going to do is break. We're just going to break out of that loop, and then we can, well, then we can really do anything we want with uh, that array value here. Um, inside of this if statement, or maybe we would declare i outside of the array, so we'll have that data available, so then we can use whatever the, the final position of i is to call that array location outside of the loop. So that's kind of up to you how you guys want to use it. And we'll just put in else null, just in case. You don't really need to put in else null, I just like doing that to show you guys that there's no else condition in my code. Um, so we're going to run this again. And I totally didn't see out anything. <laughs> Oopsies. See out. Um, you know what? I'm actually going to change one thing. I'm going to add a uh, see out here before we do it. See out the position of key 
sorry about the background noise. That would be my uh, my washer and dryer going a little angry in the background. Um, and then we're going to say is I in the well we'll say is at position I in the array. So we'll do that, and then we'll compile, and uh, let me just add in a semicolon there. So that's the basis of a linear search. So in this case, the position of 70 is at position 6 in the array, and I um, should have added in a couple of endls here. Looks kind of crappy when that uh, is just right up against the exit text like that. And so that's the basis of what we're doing here. Um, we've sorted these numbers. And again, I'm going to add a lot of comments to the IDE1 link to this. So please check that out. Um, if I went into the very, very, very specifics of why, it's actually about a 20 minute lecture. So I'm going to try to give you guys detailed notes on it rather than give you guys the exact uh, logic behind it. If you guys want to challenge, you can actually take that same code and see if you can uh, reverse the order so it goes from uh, a sort of high uh, to low rather than a low to high as I've done here. Um, and the idea of a linear search is simple. We have a key value and we're comparing it to what's in the array. And when it's equal to what's in the array, we've found the value we want. It won't always be that straightforward. Um, you might be dealing with record numbers. When we get into objects, it's going to be a bit different. Uh, there's going to be a lot of things that you guys are going to want to take away from this. Uh, but we're going to talk a lot more about sorts and searches. And um, I think next time we're going to. I don't know if I want to wrap this up and talk more about it, or if I want to go straight into a, a linear or a binary search. I'm sorry, um, but there's a lot of different methods of sort of handling searches and handling uh, data that we really need to talk about in a timely fashion. But now that this is out of the way, I think I'm just going to do maybe a binary search and then we'll move on to our large case study and then after that I'll kinda of come back and talk about searches because we won't be using them in the case study so anyways I hope you guys have enjoyed this I hope you guys didn't mind me brainstorming for a minute there on how I'm going to teach this if you should have any questions there goes my washer and dryer again uh, leave a comment below or please I would much prefer you leave a comment on the forums, uh, reddit.com slash r slash cpp for beginners, or you Reddit uh, module 198, or if you're interested in learning Java, I'm going to be teaching that soon as well, uh, you Reddit module uh, 227. So if you guys want to come and join me for that, I would appreciate all of you coming and uh, learning with me. Have a good day, and hopefully I'll see you soon.